back to another episode of Confidently Insecure, the podcast where we are absolutely sure we don't know everything. And boy, oh boy, is this a subject I know nothing fucking about, but I'm so excited to learn about. And look, I know a lot of you listeners in uh, this audience are Spoonies. Now, if you don't know what a Spoonie is, it is someone who, uh, it's like our little funny code word for each other for people who deal with chronic uh, it's symptoms of illness or pain. And uh, it's just been a really great resource for me to Google that hashtag and find lots of people to talk with in the community. And that is exactly how I found this guest. I would love to introduce my confidants to Miss Brittany Elliott. Hi, Brittany Elliott. Thanks for joining. Hello. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thanks for finding me. <laughs> oh my God. I, I think it was the algorithm. I actually found Brittany on TikTok and confidants. I I'm so excited to tell you guys about it, it just introduce this subject. So Brittany, you have Lyme disease and Correct. I know a lot of followers have messaged me before asking me to do an episode about Lyme and I am so in the dark and uh, uneducated about it. And I thought this was like the perfect segue into it. Not only because you seem to be super educated on like your own body and health, but also the TikTok I saw you in was doing something pretty fucking crazy which is called bvt which is b venom therapy and will you please miss Brittany, tell us what the fuck bvt is exactly absolutely i think we probably had the same reaction when i first heard about b venom therapy of like what the hell is that and what is, why are people doing it um, essentially it is the action of stinging yourself with live bees to cure from like a wide variety of ailments, obviously Lyme. I've had Lyme for the last five years. That's what I'm using bee venom for. Um, a lot of people have treated different types of cancers, Parkinson's, arthritis, ALS, fibromyalgia, and like so much more. Um, and so, yeah, it's really just the act of stinging yourself. Um, there are certain practitioners that practice bee venom therapy. They're known as apotherapists. Um, oh, what's how that word? apitherapist. What the fuck does that mean? Right. It basically means you're a licensed person to be able to sing and do therapy on people. However, it's not in the U S so that's why we're not hearing about oh. it. So it's in like Germany and, or I'm sorry, uh, Europe and Asia. Um, and so of course it's like trickling down here, but it's not licensed in the U S right. which is why so it's, it's such super a holistic unknown. And I think like your TikTok went viral because a, it sounds like a fucking insane thing. And you're just like, preying on everybody's like childhood fears of being stung by a bee but the if you actually look at what's behind it and someone who doesn't know anything about living with a chronic illness or chronic pain that what the idea behind it sounds like something worth paying attention to and all you have to do is like one google about bvt to see how much it is changing people's lives so before we go into the actual uh treatment i want to talk to you a little bit about lyme because there was like one girl in my school in high school that had lyme and no one knew what it was it was like oh she got bit by a tick in girl scouts when we were little and like now she's on all these crazy antibiotics and i remember it it made her face really swollen because of all the antibiotics she was on. And yeah. like, that was the one girl with Lyme. And that's all I knew about it. Didn't know what happened to her. Don't know where she is today. Hope she's well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but let's talk a little bit about Lyme. Like, what's been your journey with it, I guess, has been the, yeah. be the first question to ask. Yeah, Lyme is tricky. So like one case is never going to be the same, which is mm. so crazy. And I think it's one of the reasons why it's so hard to diagnose. But Basically, like moral of the story is I was bit when I was seven years old. So I'm 27 years now, 27 years old now. So it was 20 years ago. Wow. Um, I was also on a camping trip, not with my Girl Scouts, um, <laughs> but with my family, somewhat similar. I think it was like the only time that I actually went camping too. Like I'm not a camper. And so of course, no one this you're like, I'm not going to fucking hike in Denver. <laughs> no, no, thank you. Um, and yeah, so I was bit then um, growing up. I had a pretty like normal life. I wasn't too sick. I definitely had like some chronic sore throats and eczema, but all kind of regular yeah. things that kids have, right? Um, however, I was 22 years old. I had just graduated college in San Diego. I was living like right next to the beach. I was a block from the ocean in this mm. cute ass little beach bungalow. Um, and it was great. Um, however, there was mold everywhere. Like I was Ooh. like rubbing it off the walls. I was like putting bleach on it, which now knowing what I know, like if you guys have mold, that is the worst possible thing that you can do because it just releases spores. And is that something spores. you can see? Like, is mold yeah. something you well, can see? 
and you can and you can't like if if it's growing out of the walls yes but most of the times it's hidden behind so a lot of people don't know they have it but the biggest thing about mold is that it is one of the biggest triggers for Lyme disease so that's how mine actually was triggered so I was living in that beach house 22 healthy partying five to six nights a week by the ocean living my best life and then overnight it's like my brain just like stopped working I wasn't there like my fatigue was surreal Mm. like just everything just dropped and I went to doctors and doctors and doctors. Um, and it took me five years to, to finally get a diagnosis, but it was really triggered by that, that mold. House Can that I, I ask in. when you were seven, uh, because like what, what I have read about Lyme is that doctors in the U S believe you get bit, you get treated and then it goes away. And that's just simply not the case of what we hear with like chronic Lyme disease is that, we know, well, we don't know, but like we, we can see from, from uh, survivors that it stays in the system and can be triggered later on in life. So a lot of people won't even um, attribute their symptoms back to something of like, oh yeah, maybe it is from something that I was bit when I was a kid. So when you were bit as a kid, did you go through a round of antibiotics and like that was it? And your parents were like, okay, solved. Yeah. So actually I didn't. And it's because I was living in San Diego and doctors like, oh, Lyme doesn't exist in California. You know, like things are changing a lot, but like, I know that's a stigma for a lot of states. That ticks don't exist in California? Or I'm sorry, the ticks that carry the Lyme bacteria don't exist. So they, a lot of people will attribute it to like, oh, only on the East coast and Lyme Connecticut and like these, you know, areas that have a lot of ticks. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I didn't, can you also break down just for me the, what you mean by a tick that carries the Lyme bacteria? Yep. So there's lots of different ticks out there. Um, kind of like just thinking about different dogs, right? So lots of different types. Um, and some just happen to carry the Lyme bacteria, which is known, um, as Borrelia. Um, and that's, yes. So that's one of, that's basically Lyme and there's multiple co-infections that can come with it that are also carried by ticks. It's, it gets really deep into like the yeah, science no of shit. things and all I these bet. like big names of Bartonella and all, and all of that girl, stuff. You, yeah. you unfortunately you know. <laughs> are an expert in it, but I think uh, that that's important to know because like I said, right. when as a kid you're taught, you get bit by a tick, it goes away, move on with your life. So you right. didn't even get treated because doctors didn't believe that Lyme ticks existed in California. And my my anger with the medical community, I mean, I live with a, a chronic uh, pain disease called trigeminal neuralgia, which is a very underfunded, very rare, very ignored uh, pain. Feels. Thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but my anger with this and, and, and how it relates to Lyme is that we have people that don't feel well, period. And it is chronic and it is seen and it is talked about. But there is these doctors who I will watch like these videos on YouTube will they, where they will say like they gaslight the shit out of you. They go like, well, we see that people are sick and let's let's figure out what the real cause is because it's not Lyme's. It's not Lyme yeah. disease. Let's figure out what it is. And it's like your parents, I'm sure, back at that time are listening to a medical professional who's gone through school. What more are they supposed to fucking know? Like we right. trust these people. They're supposed to take care of humans. So our entire life is then informed by a professional who's supposed to know everything that looks like God in our eyes. And in mm-hmm. fact, it is fucking changing and they're like refusing to acknowledge it. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. And then, like you said, you have to kind of change everything that you were like brought up to believe, right? Like mm. doctors know everything. And I always like relate it to your parents. Cause it's like, you always growing up. It's like, you think your parents are always right. Same thing with doctors. And then you get older and realize, you know, like they actually don't know everything. And I think the time that like kind of switched over for me is like when I was the one kind of telling the doctor like things that I knew and he's like, oh, I've never heard of that. And I'm oh like, my God, how do you not know? <laughs> and it's almost like, do you guys not read the internet? Like, do you not skim through Reddit threads? Like, do you not get down to the, the places where people are talking about this? Like Twitter and TikTok and, and, uh, you know, it's hard to get all of that out in one 30 minute appointment with a doctor. And, and it doesn't seem like the education is changing on their side either. So not at uh, all. fuck the system, but let's get yeah. back to uh, <laughs> you being 22, living your best life. Yep. Do you think the mold was because you're living by a very like wet area? 
Completely. Yeah. So mold is way more prevalent, like in humid areas. So especially in the South, like Florida, I I have a lot of friends. (laughs) All right. You definitely know about the humidity out there. Um, Obviously by the ocean and the moisture, it's going to be a little bit worse. Um, And so that's one of the main reasons I actually moved to Colorado was just to like start fresh. It's one of the driest states and just like start fresh and see if I can treat lime and mold together. Because You moved your whole ass life to another state when you were living in a cute ass little bungalow because of your health. Basically, yeah. (laughs) I don't think people like realize how common that is with people, especially with something like um, we talk about like mold toxicity or um, the Epstein-Barr virus or like any of these uh, invisible illnesses, how much people's lives are uprooted and how much that costs financially. And mm-hmm. on one of your TikToks, I love the TikTok where you're dancing forward, like ready to find a cure for Lyme. And then oh, you yeah. back out of the room, like <laughs> realizing most like the average Lyme patient spends $53,000 a year looking for a cure. And that is it's bullshit. <laughs> That is an insane number. That's what people make more than what people make in a year. So, so let's mm-hmm. go back to you being 22 and you start having these symptoms. How long did it take for you to go, oh, this isn't just like me partying and being young. Like something is weird here. Honestly, overnight, like I knew, like my body was off. Like I remember going to work and just having like all of these eye floaters and like feeling dizzy. And I was like, something is weird. Like my body just like it chemically felt off so shaky, so out of it. Um, and so I started going to doctors literally the second that that started. Um, but I didn't get a true answer until four years down the road. So are you going to like general practitioners who then recommend you and refer you? Like what was the chain of command in getting a diagnosis? Um, a lot of self work. Um, it did start with going to general practitioners and just like MD doctors, but they kept just like running me off as having anxiety or depression. And I kept trying to tell them, I'm like, the reason I'm anxious is because like, I don't like something's off in my body and I don't feel right. And the reason I'm depressed is because I don't feel like the old me. Mm. So like, there's a cause behind this, but like, that's not the answer, you know, like I knew that there was more. So I did a ton of research. Um, I did listen to them after like, after probably like 10 appointments and after them just telling me like, it's anxiety. I was like, okay, maybe they're right. Like maybe it is in my head. Maybe I'm going crazy. I don't know. So I took a break for about like a year, year and a half. And then after that, I was just like at my like breaking point. I was like, something's not right. It's time to get going. So I got like on my keyboard, on my Reddit, on my Google, like everything. I started becoming my own doctor, um, which is crazy. I learned so much within like that year. Um, I first like attributed it to like having some low iron and then I was on some Facebook group and it was like iron and parasites and parasites and mold. And then like when I saw the word mold and saw all the symptoms listed, I was like, holy shit. Wow. Like this goes, this is exactly what I'm feeling. And I'll never forget. My mom was always like, did that house make you sick? It was so moldy. And at the time I didn't know anything about mold. I was like, no, but now reading this online and all the symptoms, I was like, this is me this is what's happening. So I made an appointment that day for a mold specialist. Um, there's very what few of that? them. What there's is that? Very, yeah, there's very few of them. It's just a doctor that specializes in mold and like wow. and the symptoms and can diagnose you and, and help treat you. So you went to a mold specialist and what does that appointment look like? Um, it was interesting. So basically what he did is he did just an assessment of my symptoms. Obviously he did a visual, um, I think it's called VCS. It's like visual contrast test to see like what my eyesight was at. Um, he also did a neuroquant, neuroquant MRI, which showed to have brain lesions on my brain. What? And Kelsey, this is the craziest thing. So when I first got sick and with the MD, they're like, let's test your brain because you're, you are seeing a lot of neuro stuff. They tested my brain. This was like right when I moved into the house, I had no lesions. Three years later, the lesions developed. So it goes to show you over time, like this is, it's, I haven't had those forever. It developed from this whole And when the the doctor shows you the MRI, are you just like, yes, fucking yes. But then also I have lesions on my brain. Oh no. Like that's gotta be such a... I can relate to that feeling so fucking hard of like, yay, but fuck. (laughs) Like (laughs) now what? Like that's such a scary thing to hear that you have lesions on your brain. Yeah, it was definitely exactly that. It was the ultimate high and the ultimate low. (laughs) As I was like, yes, finally, honestly, out of everything that I've had, even Lyme disease, because like some people still to this day, it's like Lyme's not real. 
still to this day, having that MRI is the best validation that Uh, I've had. Like, I'm like, I have these, like, do you want to see, like, there's a reason why, you know, and it's like hard evidence. And I think that was probably the biggest turning point for my family too, to be like, okay, this is real. Wow. This is real. I was going to ask, cause you know, even just what you said had triggered a memory that of recent, um, where I had gone on a medication called Topamax for years. And I, as a comedy writer, I literally thought I had gotten dumber. Like I was like, am I not reading enough? Am I not watching enough? Like, why can't I think of words? Why is my vocabulary stunted? Like I couldn't finish a sentence. I would be seeing the word in my head and I physically couldn't say it. And so after a year or two of taking Tobamax, I finally said something to my, uh, I guess he was a neurologist at Cedar sinai which is like one of the biggest hospitals in Los Angeles. And he casually goes, oh yeah, that's a side effect of Tobamax. And I go, wow. Huh? And he's like, yeah, that's probably the most common side effect is that your inability to finish sentences. And I'm like, wait, what? Get me off of this shit. So I immediately weaned off of it and still to this day have not fully gotten my powers back, my brain powers back. And even today, as we speak, I am weaning off of gabapentin because it had the same fucking feeling. And while Mm -hmm. it did relieve my nerve pain a little bit, the symptom of the brain fog was so bad that I'm like, I would rather be in pain and be able to write and be funny and have a career and make money than be comfortable. And the fact that I have to fucking Mm. choose between the two is infuriating. And so the idea that you had all of these symptoms, it's so clear that you're sick and I'm glad you bring up family because that I feel like is also you're at an age where it's like, are you still on their insurance? Are you asking them for money for medical bills? Like how, do you then move forward going, look, I have brain lesions. I'm telling you I'm fatigued. I'm telling you I have brain fog. I feel sick. I didn't know the eye floaters were a thing because I get eye floaters and I just attributed it. We got a chat. (laughs) We got a chat. You know, and I had been tested for fibro and, Mm -hmm. um, also for uh, Hashimoto's uh, thyroiditis or whatever, because people were like, oh, it must be your thyroid. And I, is Lyme like fibro in which there is not a definitive test to run a blood, whatever, run an MRI and say, and it comes up positive. Like, isn't it a diagnosis of elimination? So this is where like things get a little tricky and this just comes down to like how effed our medical system is. So there is a Lyme test by the CDC. (laughs) However, Doctors really don't test for it that much. Um, And if they do, it's very, very hard to test. It's very inaccurate. Um, When it is, it is accurate is basically if you had just gotten bit recently. So like in the last week to the last month. However, if you're like me 20 years later showing symptoms, I'm not going to show up positive for a CDC test because all of my Lyme is pretty much dormant at that point. So you're required to pay out of pocket. Some are covered by insurance, but the medications aren't um, to see it. They're called a Lyme literate. Lyme literate medical doctor, LLMD for short. Um, and that's, and that's, you would go to see to get a Lyme test and diagnosis. So did you do that or were you like, I already know I've had Lyme. So now let's go look at this mold toxicity. Is that like, I guess at what, what thing are you treating at this point? Like, is this an overall, like, I've got to get rid of this mold. I've got to move. I literally need to geographically change my positioning so that my body can detox or are you trying to treat the Lyme or both? Yeah. So mold and Lyme, like over 90% of the time, I just, I'm completely a believer that they go hand in hand. I'm not a doctor, so I can't tell you that, but I definitely, I definitely believe it. We should be at this fucking point. At this point, (laughs) right? I I totally believe that. Um, so yeah, so I was diagnosed with mold first, not knowing I had Lyme. Um, but usually you can treat both simultaneously. So I did move, I started the detoxing and I didn't find out I had Lyme until after I moved. So that was Mm. a whole nother conversation and a whole new doctor out here, but him telling me that they do go hand in hand. Um, so now I'm just trigger and it's a trigger, right? Right. So it's, it's hard to heal Lyme. If you're in mold, it's hard Mm. to heal mold. If you're, if you have Lyme, so it's, it's like, what came first, the chicken (laughs) or the freaking egg? So, right. So it, can you sue if your house has mold and you get sick? That's a tough question. I know technically there are like mold lawyers. I know a friend actually who's going through a similar case in San Diego. Um, I, I don't know enough about it, but I, I've always been curious. Um, yeah. it, but also just like the testing of, of what we think is appropriate in the U S versus what isn't like, 
it's not a clear line because I can be sick and you can be completely fine. Right. Right. Well, and so it seems like also that underlying dormancy of the Lyme is something like you said, like every case is going to be different. I know that uh, in Los Angeles, we like had a leak once and they came and like literally painted over it. And I was like, wait, mm. but there's still water like in there. And don't you need to rip all of that out? Like, do we have any power as tenants and I guess renters, unfortunately, to advocate for our own health in our apartments? Like, should I be more uh, interested in the lot? Li- <laughs> uh, excuse me, in the mold? uh levels of my apartment is that something we should I mean all... I mean I think in general like it's I think to be tr- so transparent I think mold is like oh, yeah. the biggest silent killer of Ooh, our nation like yeah. I think it causes diseases cancers and like it's just one of those things that people don't even think to test for right. um but I do know I live in kind of like a nicer like luxury apartment and in the contract it's like mold like it's not an issue kind of thing. Like basically yeah. you're contracted so you can't sue them. But so that's interesting. I feel like people should check their leases. Mm-hmm. Like I'm going to go run upstairs and check my answer <laughs> business is over because we've had that conversation before. Um, okay. So talking about mold and um, other invisible illnesses, I think um, uh, I, I'll, I'll just tell you my experience with what I went through with these like invisible illness. And then I want to hear you, comment on it because I'm still kind of in the dark. I did a BuzzFeed video series where I went down to Florida with a friend of mine who suffers from severe endometriosis, vaginismus, all sort of pelvic floor dysfunctions. And then I have my chronic pain in my nerve. And we went down to Florida to do laser therapy with a woman who really believes in like the detoxing and, um, you know, with, with my friend, it was about like getting out the, the, the toxic cells and the toxic, um, tissue. And for me, because it's a nerve injury, it was a little bit harder to, um, assess what, uh, invisible, uh, poison was in my body. Right. It was more like, mm-hmm. how can we clear it out to give the nerve the best chance to repair? So in all, our testing she did this thing where we laid on a table and she had these little test tubes of like poisonous things like Epstein yeah. bar and um herpes uh, os- uh os- herpes ostra ostras ostra herpes it's a type Sounds of like right. something <laughs> herpes related and she would like put it on our stomach and then she would make us do this test where she would push our arm and if we could push back it was negative, but like the yes. second it was, uh, it fell down. The second our arms fell down, she would say that that was positive in our bodies. And now when we filmed this, we went home that day and we were like, this bitch is fucking crazy. Like what the <laughs> fuck? This is woo woo magic shit. Like she was yep. pushing on our arm with a little test tube on our belly. Like what the fuck? But it, and it seemed really cr- like witchy shit. And then, you know, the comments, of course, when the video came out is everyone's like, this chick is just like crazy. That test isn't verified that that that. But if you look at things that people are doing in Europe and the way that they're testing for these invisible poisons and toxins, it's so much more funded and educated. So mm-hmm. I guess all of that to say my question to you is, A, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and B, how does that uh, relate to people with chronic invisible illness, like Lyme, like fibromyalgia, like these cancers, like how does that also play into what you had to go through? Yeah. Um, first of all, before I even answer those questions, I do need to tell you that I actually like watched those videos oh. like years ago Oh no way. and that was, and this was before I even had any diagnosis. Like I remember watching it was you and Laura, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 I remember watching it and being like, Oh my gosh. Like it was the first time I truly like related with something, even though I had no diagnosis, I was like, there's something wrong. And wow. like, these girls are fighting for an answer. I need to do wow. the same. So thank you for putting That's that out so into funny. the world. I did it's, know. I know. I know. I was going to tell you today and then that just oh, came up. It's amazing. crazy that you brought that up. Yeah. Um, Basically it's muscle therapy. So mm. it is that what they'll do is like, they'll put things on your body. And basically, like you said, they'll do the weight of your muscles. If it's weak, it's usually means that you're like, you need more help assisting in that specific area. Mm. Um, and I agree. I just don't think things like that are super well funded in the United States. So like, that's why people 
they look at it and they think, oh, it's crazy. I mean, people, the comments I get even just about my, my B venom therapy, it's like, you're nuts. And it's yeah. like, until you're actually going through it, mm. then you'll know, like you'll do anything, you know, yeah. to, to feel better. And that's just one other, you know, way to, to find answers, I guess. Yeah. I've done that a few times. Um, mm. I did that for close to a year before treating with B venom therapy mm. and it's just, it's a lot of money for supplements. What came up pills. for you in that muscle testing? Yeah. Um, they tested for a bunch of Lyme things. So I did it through a Lyme doctor. So, um, specific co-infections, parasites, things like wow, that. Wow. Holy yeah. shit. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Cause the one we did was just kind of like a basic, like, here's a bunch of shit. Let's see what sticks. Yeah. Um, and you're right. It is expensive. Like, mm -hmm. was yours a uh, supplement or what was your treatment with those? It was um, I went to a doctor that was a little mix of both. I've done multiple ones. Some have been totally holistic herbs and supplements, and then others have been a mix of antibiotics and supplements. Ah, uh, wow. Yeah. 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 Holy shit. That reminds me, like, a fan wrote in talking about my chronic yeast infections, and she wrote in saying, like, hey, I have the same thing. Turns out there's this crazy bacteria that no one ever fucking tests for, and I had it, and I took one round of antibiotics, never had another yeast infection again. And wow. I asked my gyno to test it, and she was like, yeah, sure, we can test it. I mean, like... It, just because you have it doesn't mean anything, but we can test it. Fucking came back positive. Just finished my round of uh, no antibiotics. And like, I'm waiting to see now, you know, if I get a yeast infection. But like the fact that that had to come from a fan was yeah. wild to me. Like, why doesn't my gyno think mm -hmm. to test that? Like, and I love my gyno. My gyno is the oh, best yeah. gyno in Los Angeles. But like, how come that wasn't on the list? The same way I have to imagine, like, when you're going to all these MDs that they're not test like why do we have to go to these fucking specialists that cost a million dollars to get an answer and and then pay even more money on top of that? So mm -hmm. okay. So you do the muscle testing, it's very expensive. What the fuck led you to be venom therapy? Um, I mean, we've talked about it a little bit, but just the cost of everything. Like I moved to Colorado by myself, single woman working, and I was spending Gosh, over a thousand, maybe 2000, if not more a month. And that was just average. Like there wow. were times where it exceeded that based on the different yeah. types of appointments that I was having. Um, and on top of it, I was getting nowhere. So I'm like, here I am like paying so much better. money, <laughs> not feeling better. And I'm like, this is like, this doesn't feel right. Mm. And during this whole time, like I had heard about beef and I'm therapy through all these different Facebook right. groups and similar to what you're saying, doctors aren't telling you, but I'm like learning about through the community, right. right. Of like what's actually working for people. And so there's a few different Facebook pages. So I hopped on those and I kid you not like the testimonials. I have never, I have never seen something where it's like, I am cured. I feel better. This is the best thing I've ever done for my life. Like I have wow. my life back. I'm like, I am in so many line groups, but like this B Venom one, I was like something like, it's I different. feel like something's different. And like, you I feel believe like, it. Like these mm -hmm. people, like in these groups are fucking desperate they are at the oh, yeah. same shit as we are like we are willing to do anything try anything we me and laura say all the time if it's a placebo i don't care if it makes you feel better do yeah. it so to see that feedback must have been like a real like oh shit pique your interest eye opener situation completely yeah and so like after doing the research and all that i was like this i'm on to something and then um another amazing part of it is the cost so like i was saying i was spending over a thousand two thousand dollars a month BVT costs me like 60 to a hundred dollars a month and it's helping. So I'm like, what, like wow. it's a no brainer. Okay. That, okay. Let's break that down. You saw people stinging themselves with bees and you were like, I got to try that. If it's going to make me feel better, that alone should just be a testament to non spoonies to hear how fucking crazy <laughs> we will yeah. get to yep. feel better. Okay. So, are you afraid of bees? I was. Now they're like my favorite creature to walk this entire planet. Like I want to have hives. I want to like embrace them. I'm obsessed. Have but, you yeah, ever I was been definitely... stung by a bee before? Yeah. Well, actually I have an amazing story about being stung by a bee. Um, I was in college. I was on my way to, I was getting ready for like a sorority dance back in the day. And wow. of course we had to go tanning, right? So hopped into ITAN. I was enjoying my country music, like <laughs> music on. Um, and I could you not like a bee stung me in the ass as I'm sitting oh, there like so my casual. God. <laughs> I like feel Ow. the buzz. Yeah. I ended up getting like 10 free tans out of it. So I don't tan anymore. <laughs> that's not good. I'm very holistic now, oh, but just so goes funny. to show you. Yeah. So I've been stung. Um, didn't have any crazy reactions by all means, but yes, I but have it been stung. But it fucking hurts. 
Yeah, it definitely like burns. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, okay, maybe I don't know. I've been stung by a wasp. Okay, those are way more. They're oh, way worse. is it? Yeah. And I got stung in such a weird place. I got stung on the bone of my Ugh. knuckle where there was like no meat. It was just like yeah, pure fire. It's in, okay, in so, your bone. Yeah. yeah. So maybe I can't speak to bee stings, but so you, okay, just tell me how you got started. Like what was the first step? Um, yeah, the first step, I mean, like I said, just really diving deep onto those Facebook pages. I, it took me a good six months to actually pull the trigger mm. because I was nervous. Like, yeah. like you said, from an outside like person, it, this seems crazy. And yeah. even me before I was doing it, it was crazy. And now that I'm nine months in still to this day, I'm like, Oh, it is. I asked my roommate all the time. Like, isn't it kind of like weird that I sting myself with these? Like it's just <laughs> casual part of our like morning routine, like whatever. Everyone um, I've talked to to tell that I was doing this interview today was like, what? Yeah. No, that's not a thing. And that's not real. And I was like, oh, well, here's the research on what blah, 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 and the history. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And like, I don't even really know shit. And the fact that yeah. everyone's first question was how the fuck do you send bees in the mail? Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's my favorite <laughs> thing. They literally FedEx them in a small little box and they come straight to my mailbox. I'm like, this is the, like, it's just an Amazon package basically. So did you have to find a beekeeper that like believes in this? Like, is that important to you or do you just um, buy wherever? Yeah. Bees? So I did a bunch of research and basically there's, there's two like pretty well known, um, like hive people that have their own hives or I guess beekeepers, um, that are willing to like ship. There's two, there's like one East coast, one West coast. However, you can find a local beekeeper. They're all pretty much very like excited and open to it. Um, Mm -hmm. because basically the bees that we're using, um, are at the end of their lifespan. So like, if they know, there's like, basically they, they send us the worker bees. So they've already like, kind of like lived out their life a little bit. They have like two to three weeks until they were to pass. And so they're sending us those bees. They're not sending us these like fresh bees that are going to live for years. You know, what is the Um, average life of a bee? Is that a dumb question? No, that's actually, I need to find out that question. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, I was just saying, thinking about that. I'm like, I don't know. Um, So like basically it's not long though. Right. Like it's important to note that like these bees are on their way out and their last duty as a bee is like to help someone feel better. Like it don't PETA like stay the fuck away. Yeah. And that's my biggest concern with promoting it, right? Because it's like, I don't want to take people's medication away and it's such a fine line. And I think that's also maybe why it hasn't been promoted as much. But at the same time, I'm like, this is saving people's lives and it's Mm. cheap. And I don't know why we're not talking about it. Like I have people on my TikToks that have been popping up, like my dad, he cured his MS, my mom, she's fibromyalgia free. Like, and I'm like, so there's truth behind it, you know, but it's just, it's also that fine line of like, how much promotion do we want to do? Yeah. Cause you're also just in the thick of it. Like at nine months, like, you know, as you move forward, I have to imagine like you have to see if you even fucking feel better. Like you have to give it time to actually work. So Mm -hmm. let's talk about you ordering your first batch of bees. Like the setup is so cool looking like the setup is fucking crazy looking on TikTok. You guys can all go see, but it's basically like you have a box in your bathroom and then like 10 fucking tweezers that you pick. (laughs) Like the whole process is crazy. Can you explain like how it works? Yeah. So basically I get the bees shipped to my house two times uh, a month. They come, like I said, just in this little box and I transport that little box into what we call the bee buddy, which is their home. It's like their little mm-hmm. hive. Yeah. Um, is and there love- honey in there? There's not honey, but I, I, yeah, I feed them honey, raw organic honey. You can either feed them, (laughs) you can either feed them honey or you can feed them like bee candy and water. I do the honey route, which is easier, um, Mm. for efficiency reasons, but yeah, basically get that shipped then I'll unload them. Um, the whole protocol is there's a few different protocols out there. And that's one thing I do want to note about BBT is like, it's not one protocol fits all. Like you can go to an apotherapist who's the person who can mm-hmm. sting you, right? There's very few certified ones in the US that came from like Europe. I have to there's, imagine there's some in LA. I'm sure. Right? Um, yeah. You would think under the table though, cause it's just not, it's not certified here. So we can't actually mm-hmm. promote it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so you can, I mean, you can go to them, um, and get stung, but the, the process that we have here is just like the one that I'm following is basically three days a week. I sting myself with bees. I started out, 
I started at one sting and I worked my way up to 10 and the, the protocol calls for 10 stings three times a week, but it took me around like four months to work my way up because of the die off reaction from Lyme, which is also called herxing. Um, well, okay, is- hold on. Let me stop. <laughs> There's a lot of information yeah. to load. <laughs> I want to, I want to stop first with like logistically, how do you get bees from a box into another box without a ca- comical like cartoon moment of a bee swarm <laughs> happening in your apartment? Was that um, scary to do the first time? You have no idea. I <laughs> was shaking my freaking like ass off. My roommate, we like went outside because I was like, okay, we can't have any escape in the house. Yeah. So we like went outside on the patio. Um, the one that I used, like it basically, the little bee box, it has this sliding door. Mm-hmm. So it's stapled. So you take off the staples and then you basically slide the thing open. And it just so, flies right into the other box. So you put that box within the, the other box. Uh, if that makes and they sense. they just fly out. And they fly out. So you have to like open it quick and then close the door quick. So that way, like they don't all come at you and escape. So your but, first time doing that, you were like, okay, like no slippery hands, no, like nothing on the floor to trip over, like very cautious yeah. be transferring. <laughs> I was a hot mess. I oh went, I have photos of it and it's actually oh, hilarious now looking back on, <laughs> I jammed the box, I jammed the small box in and it fits good if you were to like put it kind of at an angle. Well, I jammed it in. I got so scared. So then I shut the, the like actual B door and the whole thing is just jacked shut in there. No bees came out. It's just fully like stuck. And I, I was just, it was a hot mess. Like oh my it was God. not well. Now it's so easy. Now you're good at it. Yeah. And so, so the bees are in there in this cute little box in your bathroom. Are they buzzing? Can you hear them? Yeah. Um, so I keep them in my closet when I'm like not stinging myself. Um, and you can't like, if I were to take off the little honey piece, cause right on the honey is like the mesh. So they kind of all come up to the mesh part. You can hear them not super loud. You have to be standing like a foot away to hear them. I it's have not to like, imagine. Yeah. Like that would be nice though. Like I would maybe put it on my bedside drawer and use it as like white noise to fall asleep or something. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's the next biggest idea, I guess. <laughs> We should talk later. Yeah. Uh, okay. So then the process of getting them out is so cool, like aesthetically to look at because you're taking these big ass long tweezers and you're picking them out of the box. And how do you pick them out? Cause you don't want them to die, right? You want them to be alive. Right. Cause can they sting you if they're dead? Um, the stingers can sometimes still work, but it would have to be like within minutes or so. It wouldn't be like a, yeah. So you Um, take them out with little tweezers. How do you like catch a bee? (laughs) Yeah. To be honest, that's probably the scariest part. Like it's fine now, but like just the most nerve wracking, like initially I thought the sting was going to be the craziest, but it's like, no, like having to open the door and make sure they don't fly out at you and five could come out and then like catching it and making sure it doesn't escape. Right. Um, so that, and your roommate's still, like, what the fuck? I didn't sign up for this shit. I know. With the roommate. I know. Honestly, she like loves it. She loves oh. watching and she loves helping. She's like, can I sting you today? I'm like, sure. <gasps> oh my God. That's um, a cute fetish. So you yeah. take it, you, you, so I, you pin them out and like where do you grab them on the body so that it's helpful to sting yourself so I grab either I always grab by the legs so a lot of times they'll be like crying crawling on the side wall so I take the little plexiglass I grab them by the legs and then shut it and pull it out the legs are strong yeah they don't like break off no okay they're pretty strong yeah and the tweezers that we have aren't like too hard gripping so like you were saying like you don't want them to die so it's like they grip enough but it's not where they're just like give them a hug Exactly. Just a and so hug. then you like stick them upright in this like hole holder. <laughs> like it's very cool to look at. I will say like I want to post yeah. some videos for sure. So you grab how many each time you do it? So 10. But when I started, it was at one. Oh, OK. And so what was it like stinging yourself for the first time? And where do you sting yourself? And does that matter? Yep. So the first time was so nerve wracking. I've always had like the shakiest hands in general, like playing sports. And this probably came from Lyme, but like playing sports, people would always be like, Britt, like, are you okay? Cause I would just be like, uh, I'm fine, you yeah, know? Yeah. Um, and so we have like a video and I'm like, it's cause you sting the back side of like near your spine area, like an inch into the right of the spine, basically just to make sure that you're hitting all the nerves because your spine is connected to really every part of your body oh. from the brain all the way down to your toes. Like wow. it, it's really, it's just honestly crazy how much it can next to yeah um but yeah I was shaking so bad um I was so nervous and I just remember like I was trying and I couldn't do it and then once I did it it was like done and and like I said what did it it's feel just... like were you like ow or are you just like yeah. dope on to the next one honestly in the video I, I you can hear me I'm like huh wasn't bad at all like acting really? like I'm so like yeah 
yeah, it was bad, but I'm just like, I thought I was so tough. Like, I'm like, oh, and then this is easy. I, I don't know if it was you or another woman. I, I think it was a, the Vice documentary I watched about it, but the woman, like, after she does it, she says, like, thank you, B, and, like, puts it Oh, yeah, it that's in Lauren, box. my friend Lauren. I love oh our God. little bee community we have. She's amazing. Um, yeah. I think that, and I think just throughout my whole journey, like, I've been learning to be a lot more spiritual and mm. mindful and things mm. like that. And I we think, all like... We end up there because of this shit. <laughs> we have to, which, one of the biggest blessings that I've had, because mm. I don't think I would have ever ended up there had Amen. I not been for Lyme. Mm. But, yeah, every time I sing, you know, I say thank you, I say my grace. Um, oh. I don't know if you saw my video, but I do keep all my bees in, like, a mason jar. Wait, I don't think I, I saw that one. Um, I just put a new one up this morning, so you can go oh, look okay. later. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I put them all in a mason and dry, keep them in the freezer after and like I cannot wait for the day where it's like I'm feeling well enough to go on this hard hike or like go Aww. somewhere super beautiful and like say my grace and have a burial you know Aww, and just like that's just great just give back you know because I think so it's super important that is I mean like honoring like any kind of animals like service to humanity I mean I know people that say like thank you before they eat a burger or whatever yeah. but and also just like the the culture of like using the whole animal like you know that's really important to some people uh, I digress um so after you sting yourself I've seen that like a little area of your body swells up and then by the time you're done you know your friend Lauren she I mean her b- back looks like art at the end like it's yeah. like rows of these <laughs> I mean she does a lot she's I got a good it. aim <laughs> yeah yeah like it you know you have to like tap their butt sometimes to get them to sting you like the act yeah. of like wanting a bee to sting you I still don't think mentally I could get over that but mm-hmm. once you've done that the area swells up and does that mean the bee venom is in you like or is that just your body's reaction to it or yeah so basically it's the body's reaction so you'll keep the stinger in for 15 to 20 minutes for full effect (laughs) I forgot about that part (laughs) yeah yeah so you'll keep it in um for for about 20 minutes um however the venom like stays in your body for like 24 to 36 hours if not more so the venom is constantly working so we sting three days a week my sting days are like Monday Wednesday Fridays and then Saturdays and Sundays I have off. And sometimes I can tell, like, like today I'm like, okay, I'm kind of ready for my sting mm. sesh because it's like, I want that venom to like, I'm ready for it to come back to my body. So let's talk about the venom. What? 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 What's, what's, what's the venom? What? Like, I know that like historically people have been using bee venom for since the beginning of time, but what is in it? What is it doing to your body? Yeah. So basically the bee venom, the biggest compound that's made up of bee venom or of just the venom in general is called melitin. And it's basically made up of like so many different things, but it's anti-parasitic, antibacterial, anti-malaria, anti-inflammatory. Mm. They say it's actually like a hundred times more effective than uh, like cortisone shots. It's like that oh much of an God. anti-inflammatory. And so as you know, with any chronic illness, the literally biggest contributor is inflammation. I right? literally am like, I don't know if you can tell, but for the past like 20 minutes, I've been like fucking with my face. Cause I've been talking for like three hours <laughs> doing other podcasts this morning. And like, I know that this nerve pain is from inflammation and like, Always. yeah, I will probably go take like a 600 milligram ibuprofen or I'll like rub some CBD on it afterwards. Like you're saying that potentially like any in, anti any inflammatory disorder could benefit from bee venom because it's an anti-inflammatory. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people use this like for general pain, like wow. athletes, things like that, for arthritis, fibromyalgia, all of those types of things that are really just inflammation of the body. So yeah, hundred wow. percent. So do you feel like a, a difference when you're sitting there for twenty minutes with the venom going into you, or when do you really start to feel a difference? Um, at this point, I feel like venom is like always in my body that I don't Good like, I, but however, like the first few months leading up to this, cause this is no like quick process. There's right. no reason anybody should be going and singing themselves with 10 bees off the bat. Like right. I was having bad reactions with one and like, it would happen instantly, like wow. within 10 to 15 minutes. And I would be like, okay, like I am herxing. That's basically what that means is just like a die off and your symptoms are super enhanced. So like Mm. my brain fog would be like 20 times worse. Mm. My depression, my Mm. fatigue, like it just like, yeah. So it was really, really bad. Honestly, up until I'm glad we're doing this interview now, because it was really up until like the last month or so where I really started noticing like really big differences aside from just that intense Herx reaction. So what made you keep going? Like if you went you know, seven months and you, Mm -hmm. you've done this before you've done shit where you've done it for seven months and nothing happens and you've gone and you've done these treatments. Like what made you stick with this? 
Um, I think the biggest thing are the des- the testimonials. Like people mm. told me within the first year, like not to expect anything and that it's going to get way worse before it gets better. Mm. But then also feeling worse made me have more hope, if that makes sense, because yeah. knowing that like it's working. Right. Mm. Um, so for me, like that big thing. And then lastly, I was like, what else? <laughs> Where do I go from here? Like, I'm literally <laughs> stinging myself with bees. What else is there to try? Yeah, I'm like, this is like kind of my last hope for me. Mm. I mean, obviously, I know it's going to work. Like, I have so such a good mindset about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like, where, where else would I go from here? And do you have like support groups or like, you know, I know you talk about these Facebook groups and I totally agree that that is like my first source when I'm having a bad pain day to go to and mm-hmm. like just b- bitch and vent like do you have, like, you talk about your roommate loves it. That's amazing. Like, I know if I decided to do this, my partner would be like balls deep in this. Cause that's just how his brain works. He's a very yeah. curious being, but like, do you have, being. Like, yeah, being. <laughs> Sorry, I had do you, no, of course. I mean, I thought about it a few times since we started, but I didn't. So now yeah. that I'm glad you've opened the door, we can, yeah. we can keep going. We can run uh, with it. Yeah, we can do this. <laughs> um, do you feel like you have physical support anywhere? Like, did you ever go to one of those stinging doctors or do you have people that help you? Like, how do you explain this to a person that comes over for the first time that you have yeah. a box of bees in your apartment? <laughs> yeah, try dating. No, <laughs> like that's I can't a whole imagine. different thing. I haven't even like gotten back into that world oh yet because I'm like, I don't even know where to start. Oh. Um, but yeah, I think obviously online groups are like my biggest support group, but what's been really fun is that we've been able to connect locally with like the people that do bee venom therapy. So I have like four to five different girlfriends out here and like either we'll like trade bees. Like I'm going on a walk with one this week. And so just like having that, like, you know, hard, I guess, support bees. Yeah. So if I'm like short some bees and somebody needs extras, it's kind of like a drug deal, but it's like our bee deal. You know, does the type of bee matter? It's gotta be a honeybee. It's gotta be a honeybee. That's gotta be the honeybee. So, Are those the ones that are fuzzy? That's a bumblebee. That's a bumble. Like the big, these are just yeah. the regular ones that you see kind of flying around I by your plants see outside. one dead on my, my jalapeno plant yesterday. And I was like, what happened, man? Where'd you come from? <laughs> and then I was like, mm, that's a sign that we're doing this interview today. So, okay. Fine. So then let's talk about moving forward, right? Like you say you are feeling better. Like what about your symptoms have felt better for you? Yeah. So basically I suffer from mainly neurological issues. Mm. Like obviously with those brain lesions, I have like depersonalization and Mm. dizziness. Um, what you were saying about like, you have a word, but you can't actually like, it's at the tip of your tongue, but you don't know it. Try being on zoom calls for like corporate America. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I swear I'm smart. I swear I'm smart. (laughs) That is the most infuriating part is that like, I have proof that I've been funny before. Like I know I can do it. But to have this literal like rain cloud hanging over you all the time of like symptom, I have to imagine that must feel really good. Oh too. my gosh. And yeah. And so just like in the last month, I feel like it's shedding and I feel like you hit the nail on the head about like humor because like growing up, like I was always like the funny girl and like really outgoing. Like I was like certified mm. class clown back in mm. freaking 2010. Um, and I lost that. Yeah. Like I literally lost it's, my personality. You have to yeah, grieve like, the person you were before you were sick. Completely. And that's coming back. And so oh. like just having those small glimpses oh of like God. just feeling like a normal human being. Oh, like being. It's, I know it's crazy. It's, I mean, it's you super really surreal. are like kind of making me think about this. Like I, I know I, think I started people. this interview with like no fucking way this bitch is crazy. But what a fun topic. But like, yeah, now I'm kind of like hearing you be so positive be so positive about it is I guess like how you must have felt reading those testimonials of like Mm -hmm. just talking to someone who's been there who's been to the dark 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 fucking corners of chronic pain and illness and having like any positive news and then to hear that your positive news is that like you feel like your personality is back like that to me is like Whew, I get a little teary, like thinking like that, that is even a possibility that that could come back. Like, I feel like yeah. I've said goodbye to that so long ago. And like, to you think- make me cry. Like, ah, I know. Like, out the window. Yeah, my throat is tight to me. Yeah. <laughs> but like, truly, like, uh, I, I guess I want to then kind of like wrap this up by talking about TikTok. Like you've been putting this out on TikTok. <laughs> what possessed you to make the first TikTok about it? Um, so basically just like awareness. So when I started BBT, like there was no one talking about it. And like I said, it is kind of that fine line and maybe that's the reason why, but 
I just feel like in, in general, like chronic illness, people don't make light of it enough. And like the pages that I do see, it's like mm. people suffering, which mm. trust me, I get it more than anyone. You yep. get it more than anyone. Yep. Like we have those days, but like, like you said, mindset is everything. Like yep. we have to be able to like fake it till you make it. Right. Amen. So yeah. I created, I created my Instagram page, um, prior to my TikTok, And I was the type of person where it's like, I am never getting TikTok. Like it's so dumb. I have no <laughs> rhythm. <laughs> I was like, it's for children. No, I'm Same. on it four hours a day. <laughs> Literally identical. Yeah. I was like, I have no rhythm. It's so dumb. Like I'm not going to dance <laughs> on there. And then, um, quarantine happened COVID-19 mm-hmm. and I'm like, let's download the TikTok. Let's see what this is the about. TikTok. And same thing. I, I've been constantly on it. Um, my first video on there, this is me. Like, I didn't know anything about it. I just like put my BBT thing and ran with it and no context, no information, no, like anything about a disclaimer and medical, yeah. like, and I was getting so much backlash. It was only oh. up for, like an hour and I had like 200 comments and oh people just God. been like, how dare you? Like, but it was also my fault for not providing more but, information. Like, Cause what, what are they saying? You're killing bees. That's the main yeah. thing. Yeah, that's the main thing. And just like, I mean, from an outsider perspective, that's all they see, right? right. All they see is save the bees and I'm killing them, right? Well, that's so what like, I was going to ask is like, there is such this movement with save the bees. Like, did that ever, like, I don't, listen, I give a fuck about the bees, but I would also like to have a life very yeah. much. Like, yeah, do, how did you course. reckon that feeling? Yeah. I mean, I think there's like quite a few different ways to look at it. Like, like I mentioned the bees that we use are at the end of their life. So like, I look at it as a circle of life. It's like the end of their lives is saving mine and Mm. thousands of others. Like that is insane. Um, also what I use in three years is what one queen will make within three days. So it's really minimal. What I make, or I'm sorry, what I use within three years is what one queen makes in three days. And you're talking about venom. I'm talking just bees. Oh, shit. Wait, you're right, because queens are the ones that make the bees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the queens are... Sorry, I told yeah. you, I don't know shit about bees. Okay, so, so one three-year period is what one queen can make in three days. Right. Wow. I feel like that's what fucking needs to be heard, because that then, to me is like, whoa. Yeah, it's definitely an eye-opener. And then on top of it, like, these mass die-offs of bees are, like, with the pesticides, EMFs, and chemicals. Which and is so I'm like fucking killing us. Oh, it's, it's, it's like the nature of, of our world, right? It's killing yeah. bees, and it's killing us, too. So right. it's like these people that are these trolls that are coming at me. I'm like, you're probably the same people using these chemicals right. and, like, enhancing, like, uh, I don't know. It's, no, I, I don't want to get into tip As a professional tat. internet person, I will tell you, do not feed the trolls. Like, I have yeah. tried. I will go to bat because chronic illness chronic pain is something very personal and I feel like I need to educate people and I need them to understand my pain and then I just realize like I'm screaming into a void like a a useless fucking piece of computer avatar that's it's never it you will never understand unless you've gone through it yourself and yeah I think what you're doing advocating for it and showing what it is like I couldn't, I probably watched your, vi- the video of you doing it like 10 times. Like I was just like, and I sent it to a bunch of people. I was like, what the fuck is this chick doing? This is fucking crazy. Like, and the fact that I had never heard of this mm-hmm. is crazy because then once I Googled it, all of this shit came up. And so it makes me wonder what the fuck else is happening treatment wise that people don't know about. And if it wasn't for the internet and these Facebook groups, could we be feeling better? And I'm going to be so angry if there is something out there that I could have been doing for the last five years that is not known because it doesn't make us money or you know, exactly. the doctors don't know about it. Like, <sighs> I've got a lot of, of resentment, but hope, yeah. like hope, hope, hope. And it's people like you putting this shit out there and sharing your stories that I think are giving people like me, like that breath, like that space to just even just be like, Oh, it's out there. So I hope you don't fucking stop posting. I hope I you won't. No, I feel yeah. like I've got the momentum now. And like I created my pages to create awareness. And it's like I said, there was nothing like it. And I, I just want to help people. And I think like yes. at the end of the day, like that's what it's all about. Like we like you said, we go through hell. People have no idea. We look normal on the outside, but on the inside, we're suffering on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. And it's like there needs to be more awareness, engagement and support. And I hope to just be like one piece of the puzzle. God damn. Well, look, person, like you know? what you did has hit me, which then can amplify it to hundreds of thousands of people. Like, I think that's the point is like the chain is like people that can resonate with it is going to, to make it bigger. And, uh, you know, I, I want to ask you, you mentioned you made pages for awareness. Like, are you talking about just like your TikToks and Instagram? Like what, I didn't ask what you did for a living. Do you do anything in this, the <laughs> health space? 
And um, no, I used to. I used to do event marketing for, I'm, I'm sure you've heard of essential water. It's an oh, yeah. alkaline water. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I used to. I'm in cannabis now. So still within the health space. Yeah. So what? I will hook, I was going to text did you after I know this. That? Get, I didn't know that. Do you have a specific uh, brand or is it like, we could talk later. That's Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I'll, I'll okay. send you, I'll send you some stuff and send oh, you some goodies. My God. Um, oh my God. My favorite. Yeah. <laughs> I always tell this story about like when I did the weed uh, documentary that I had so much weed sent to the BuzzFeed office that HR oh was gosh. like, Kelsey, this is illegal. There are yeah. like trees showing up to the office. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know even know how they get the address, but yeah. Um, I I think you know CBD has. I still stand behind it. I don't smoke THC, but I use CBD every single fucking day. Yeah. And even though it doesn't cure anything, it has made my life this much better, and that's enough for me to keep supporting it, we'll and talking it. about it, and yelling about it. Um, Brittany, we've been talking for an hour. I'm obsessed with you. I know we're gonna be <laughs> friends beyond this, but can you please, please, please tell our confidants our listeners anything else that you can promote to uh to have people find you and follow you or any you know organizations beekeepers i don't know this totally <laughs> yeah i'm really britter bees across the board uh britter bees with a z so on instagram on tiktok i'm hoping to come out with Get some on that YouTube. TikTok, girl uh, yeah i keep tiktoking away um, i think i should actually link you with one of the producers at BuzzFeed who's doing stuff like this. Like you would yeah. be able to make something that I think they could use. Would love it. Yeah. I'm make just thinking about happen. That. There's yeah. a reason we connected. <laughs> I believe in all that universe shit. And honestly, I think we're going to have a good convo offline yeah. too. Agreed. Maybe we can have you back in a little bit. Give us some updates and stuff. Because if you're just yeah. starting to feel better now, I can only imagine like what the next three years is going to look like. Completely. Well. Yep. Thank you so much for doing what you, you do. I'm so glad we met. And Confidants, please, her links will be below. And if you know anyone that could maybe benefit from it, all you have to do is copy and paste a link to change someone's fucking life. I cannot tell you how that simple act of someone looking out for me has really done such a difference in my world. And... Um, Yeah, don't forget to rate this five stars because it makes me happy. And if you don't like this podcast, please don't tell me. It makes me sad. I'm very sensitive. Uh, You can email us at confidentlyinsecurepodcast at gmail.com. You can follow us at all the socials at confidentlypod. And Britt, yours is at Britter's, Britter Bees with a Z. Britter Bees with a Z. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Brittany. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Bye.